Hey everyone, Dr. Skylar Baku here. And in this video, we're gonna take a little different step and we're gonna delve into what exactly an autoimmune disorder is and what causes an autoimmune disorder in the first place. So there's a lot of confusion, even in the medical world, about what exactly it is, what causes it, and where it even comes from. And right now, we're sitting around like 180 to 190 different diseases categorized as autoimmune diseases. So whether it's a primary autoimmune you know, disease or there's an autoimmune component, you know, and the list is growing and we're finding the list of who's who of diseases having some version of an autoimmune process in it. Okay. So autoimmune is all about your cells. Auto means self, immune system, immune meaning immune system. So the immune system is getting confused with the self and it starts attacking its own self, its own body. So supposedly the immune system gets confused, starts attacking different cells and different tissues and areas in the body. So I have a list of autoimmune disorders and the list goes on and on, but you know, the diagnosis of an autoimmune disorder is based on the tissue organ that's being attacked. And that's about all it tells you. It doesn't tell you why it's happening or what the results are of it are. So for instance, the thyroid. When we have autoimmune disease against the thyroid, we call it Hashimoto's. So it, Hashimoto's is hypothyroid, autoimmune hypothyroid. And Graves' disease is autoimmune hyperthyroid. And that's probably how you ended up watching this video to begin with, because that's what our specialty is in the office dealing with Hashimoto's, especially Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So for instance, if we've got an autoimmune disease that attacks the joints, we call it rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. If the autoimmune disease is attacking your connective tissue, it's called lupus. Um, if the autoimmune disease is attacking your nerves, like we call it neuropathy or from neuropathy. So just like some diabetics, you know, some autoimmune diseases um, happen where the immune system is tagging the nerves and attacks them. So you're getting the same pain, the tingling of the needles, you know, the same thing that would happen with a diabetic neuropathy, but it's just your immune system I'm attacking at this time. So if the immune system is attacking the brain, we call it MS, multiple sclerosis. So it's where, you know, there's an autoimmune disease where the immune system is attacking the nervous system and the covering around the nerves in the brain. So especially the myelin, they call it. That's a little um, covering over the nerves. And there's autoimmune diseases like in the stomach or the digestional system like Crohn's or also colitis or IBS. So all these are immune disorders affecting the digestive system. And so remember, the way we're naming an autoimmune disease or the way autoimmune diseases are classified is based on the tissue that it's attacking. And it's nothing beyond that. So the pancreas, for instance, is another, another common one. So type 1 diabetes, where you're either born with it or a lot of times you get it at an early age, it's where the immune system is attacking the pancreas cells. And that's why it doesn't make enough insulin. So that's how it becomes insulin dependent, where you need a pump or a shot to get your insulin in. But again, the reason is because the immune system has destroyed those cells that make insulin. So as opposed to like type 2 diabetes, where you're insulin resistant, so your body's still making insulin, but your cells have just become resistant to taking it in. So I know it seems overwhelming with, again, there's 180 or more different autoimmune diseases, but understand at the end of the day, all these have exactly one thing in common, and it's that your immune system is the problem. So with the immune system being the problem, we have to figure out why that's occurring. So why is the immune system turning on your own tissue? You know, because it shouldn't. We all have a thyroid. We all have a brain and nerves and the pancreas. Okay, why would the body turn on this tissue and attack it like it's foreign? Because it comes down to the cells. Autoimmune disorders come down to the cells. So we're going to talk about that now. Okay, your body is constantly replacing itself on a cellular level. So we make new cells all the time and our body replaces the old cells. You know, for instance, you know, like the rods and cones in our eyes, they get replaced every 48 hours. You have brand new cells in your eyes every 48 hours. You know, your intestines, about every three days. You know, the liver takes about six to eight weeks. Bone and nerves, they take a lot longer. And, and the thyroid takes about 90 days. Okay, so over the course of, of a year, you know, the average person, you know, will have a body that's replaced every single cell in the entire body, you know, to become something else. A new healthy cell structure it should be a new healthy cell structure. So just like making a copy of anything, the quality of the original of what you're making determines, you know, how well that copy is going to work. Remember, like back in the day, we were copying over a video cassette. You know, the more copies you made over and over, the worse it looked. So the job of the body is to constantly make new healthy cell structures. And we want to make sure we're making cells perfect. Okay, perfect healthy cells. Nice, perfect, round structures. Okay, perfect structures that function correctly. So they should look nice and circular. So when they're nice and functional that way, 
that means they're working correctly, okay? The reason is because we want things to go easily into that cell and easily out. So nutrients are the things we wanna go easily into that cell and we want toxins to be able to come out easily. So just like in the car, you know, when the body brings in material, like raw materials, like food and nutrients and things like that, so just like gas in a car, when you burn that gasoline and they make exhaust, you know, you don't want that pump back into the car, so we wanna pump that to the outside of the car, just like you wanna pump toxins outside the cell. So there's two main components to the cell, and I'll, I'll try to do my best to, you know, keep this as little science-y as possible and a little as boring as possible, but, you know, one, we've got the cell material. So that's what the cell wall is made up of, like fat and cholesterol and proteins. And that's what makes up the wall that goes around and makes that nice, healthy cell structure. So the other main thing is that that membrane, that outer wall of that cell, has to have a charge. It has to be charged up with energy. And that's no different than like charging your cell phone and plugging it in. Our cells have to carry an electrical charge in order to work. In another video, we'll talk about where that energy comes from. But for now, let's just keep it at that that cell needs to be charged and needs the energy around it. So if it loses some of that charge, that cell will actually start to become distorted and lose shape. So instead of being nice and circular, it'll actually start to look a little wobbly and oblong and things like that. So if we start, you know, putting those cells together, you know, without the appropriate materials like those proteins and fat and cholesterol, you know, well, that cell is going to be put together incorrectly. So it's just like building a house. You know, if you need wood, but all we have is plastic. Well, you can, you know, you can put that together, but it's not going to be correct and it's not going to be sturdy and you're going to have a problem. So the cell will actually start to misshape. And just like I said, it'll, it'll even flatten out. It'll have an odd structure. So what happens is those cells start to go out, that oblong, odd looking shape and cell, that's the one that's going out and replacing all of our body parts and our organs. And the other thing that happens, we can see this on live blood cell analysis, those cells actually like to come and stick together. Okay, they start stacking on each other. They start clumping together. Um, some, it's called a rouleau formation or corn, coin stacking formation. Again, we could see that on um, live blood cell analysis. But you know, for example, let's you know, let's use the thyroid. So let's say you know we're replacing thyroid cells, and let's say 10% of the thyroid is now replaced with these odd mutated cells, and because that's that's what a mutated cell is. It's a cell that's odd, oddly shaped. The structure has changed. So you know. 10%, well, no big deal, but then, okay, 20% of the thyroid, 30, 40%. But once it reaches, let's say like 51%, you know, 51% of the cell structure of the thyroid is now made up with these mutated cells. Well, that's what the immune system recognizes. And again, the one the, the immune system recognizes and has on file is that nice, round, healthy cell. So once the cells and enough of the thyroid cells start to look different enough, and once that happens, the immune system says, whoa, I don't know what that is, but those don't look at like us. Those are mutated. Let's attack it. Let's kill it. And so you see the body makes damaged cells all the time, you know, and the immune system recognizes it and cleans them up. And, and it does that all the time. That's its job. It cleans up those mutated cells. But if the mutated cells are now what your body is putting out there and it's not putting it out there mistakenly, you know, this is what the body is outputting because it doesn't have enough energy or the right materials or both to do that. And what happens is these are the cells that are now the building blocks of what your body is being made out of and what it's replacing your organs and all your tissues. And so once enough of that is replaced, now all of a sudden we have a big problem. You see, some people ask, what happened when I turned 30 or about two years ago when I got sick, you know, and all this started happening and my health started going downhill. Well, it's, it's not about your age or anything like that. You just hit that threshold where enough of those cells, those bad cells showed up where the immune system says, I don't know what that is. I don't like it. It's not supposed to be here. We shouldn't have mutated cells, okay? And so it literally thinks that half of your, let's say that, again, if we go back to the example of the thyroid, it thinks half of that thyroid is made up of those cells as a tumor because that's all a tumor is. It's a bunch of mutated cells clustered together. So the immune system starts to kill it. So when I say there's confusion in the immune system, it's not confused. It's not actually confused. We now know this, and I know a lot of doctors you know, we'll disagree on this, you know, but we now know the immune system is just trying to help you. You know, it thinks it's helping because it's killing mutated cells and that's part of its job. But unfortunately, over the course of time, while it thinks it's helping, it's also actually damaging those tissues that we're seeing there being affected. And here's the big deal with autoimmune. For 50% of the people, by the time we find out we have an autoimmune condition, so say we find antibodies against the thyroid, the immune system is already attacking somewhere else and something else. 
So remember, once the body starts making abnormal cells, that's going to affect everywhere, not just the thyroid. Again, 50% of the people, it's already attacking somewhere else by the time we find out it's attacking the thyroid. In the medical realm, and if you have Hashimoto's, you know, if you've got low thyroid, you're not going to be feeling well. It's going to make you feel really sick. You're going to be massively affected and your quality of life is going to be affected by this. So their thought process is, well, you know, you can live without your thyroid. So why don't we just take it out? Okay. And then we can just replace it, you know, with some form of synthetic thyroid hormone, you know, from the outside. And the problem with that is twofold. Okay, just because you take the thyroid out does not make the Hashimoto's go away or the autoimmune condition go away. Your immune system is reacting to thyroid hormone. So whether your body makes it or you take it synthetically or natural, if your immune system has tagged those as a problem, it's still going to attack that hormone even if the tissue is not there. So you don't just automatically get rid of the Hashimoto's just because you take the thyroid out. And second, you're losing the forest through the trees here because the thyroid you know, maybe it's not life-threatening, but, you know, if it starts attacking your heart or your brain or your kidneys, you know, those are much higher leverage organs. And if that happens, we've got an even bigger problem. But again, it's still wrapped around the issue that we have an immune system problem. It will be the challenge that someone ultimately faces is that autoimmune problem. So, you know, maybe not with the thyroid, but ultimately in their lifetime, they're going to have to come across and deal with that autoimmune condition. You know, and another thing we hear a lot about autoimmune is caused by toxins and infections, you know, and it's actually not caused by those things. But yes, they do play a big role because the idea here is, you know, if we have all these mutated cells, what happens? These cells try to make energy and they output a little, but those chemical toxins get stored inside. Remember, you know, if we want to get that exhaust out, you know, if if that cell is not perfectly healthy and round and it's flattened, you know, it's going to have a really difficult time getting those toxins out. So this kind of mutated tissue, this is where infections will live. So when that happens, you know, we see it as a component, the toxicity that will damage additional cells in the area, but it's not the thing that caused it to begin with. The cause of the autoimmune condition to begin with is when the body starts to produce those mutated abnormal cells to replace the healthy ones in your system. So the longer that goes on, the longer your body is being replaced with damaged mutated cells, the more your immune system is going to attack it. Okay, so hopefully now the conversation goes from, all right, how do I save the cells that we can? How do we get rid of as many mutated cells as possible? You know, but ultimately the most important thing we need to do is get your body to start producing the right healthy cells. Your body needs to start producing the right healthy normal cells with the right raw materials and the right amount of electrical charge and energy. Because if you do that, once you get enough of those healthy cells to replace the mutated cells, let's say in your thyroid, then all of a sudden your immune system will say, well, hey, you know, that's us now. Those are those nice, healthy, round cells. Leave it alone. Let it be. You know, there's no more reason to attack. And then magically, those antibodies will go away. Okay. You'll feel better, but ultimately the immune system reaction will stop. But again, it, it won't just stop at your thyroid too. And that's the beautiful thing. You get it to stop everywhere that it's attacking all over the body. In our upcoming videos, we're going to talk about where that electrical charge comes from and how do we get it reinstalled and reinstated into your body so you can start replacing those mutated cells with brand new healthy cells. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.